5 versus 5 on a random map and it is an average Joe's map, uh, average Joe's competition. We do like to see the slightly lower rankings at times. Uh, one person who is right on the cusp of pro, which is old Ninja Porno Samurai here, and a couple of 1400s on the other team to balance them. Alright, let's just do our sorting at the moment. The map is a random generated one. We got uh, Team 1 across here at the top, Team 2 over here at the bottom. As far as reclaim goes, well, there's nearly 40,000 reclaim to be had. It's like some giant, I was going to say giant clumps, but actually, it's the fact that there's 1,000 rated wrecks, so there's some T3 wrecks there that you just simply don't want to go in on those. I think they're Percival wrecks, judging from the giant gun on the right arm. So there we go. So a few Percy wrecks lying around waiting to be picked up. You don't want to let those run into the coffers of your opponents. This little clump of items here is 7.5k. Definitely don't let your opponents grab that while you're waiting. Okay, introductions of the players. Here we go. First up for team number one over on the far right hand side. Cybron, light blue, I'm blind. If he's blind, you wonder how he plays for Shalice. Magic man there. He's doing great for himself. Beside him in the darker blue color, it is Brotaku. Brotaku is UEF, sorry, blind is Cybron. Brotaku is UEF in the deep blue color, and he's working on his items there, and then going to get into power. He's already got a couple of pigeons as necessary, because there's no Hydro near the start. Just in front of Brotaku in the burgundy color, as Aeon, it is Mr. Von Steuben. Uh, Mr. Von Steuben is getting his pigeons down as you need, because you've got to do something with it. Uh, to the left of Mr. Von Steuben in the red colour, so we have light blue, dark blue, burgundy and red. There's fewer earth and he's another Aeon, and he's working on some more pigeons around his factory as well. And finally, to wrap it up for team number one in the back, another Cybran, it is Kusif. Uh, Kusif? Yeah, that'll do. That'll do. Anyway, he's yellow as Cybran. So, Team 1 has no Seraphim representation. We have two Aeon, two Cybran, and one UEF. Let us swing over to Team Number 2 and have an introduction of these guys. First up for Team 2 on the far left hand side is the first Seraphim of the game, and it is Ninja Porno Samurai. Congratulations, you have a strange name. Anyway, he's got his land factory down, he's in the 11 color, walking towards the front already, wants to get some of that reclaim. Uh, just beside him in the pink, pale pink color over here, it is Mr. Dick Butt Incorporated. He's also walking his way towards the front, and he's also Seraphim. There he goes. Oh, Dick Butt Inc. Dick, Dick Buck Inc. God, that's actually difficult to say if you try to say it fast. So Dick Butt Incorporated, he's having fun. Uh, in front of him in the purple color, it is Yayu971. I We have seen that guy recently. He's also walking his way towards the front, grabbing these mixes and then charging off towards the reclaim. Beside him in the orange color, Cybran player, it is Slowbro. And Slowbro's comm is oh, looking a bit slow, it has to be said. He's not actually doing anything or moving. Could be using that commander to walk around and go get some extra stuff. And behind him, also Cybran in the bright pink colour, it is Bricking. Bright King? Bright? Brick? I'm not entirely sure, but either way, he's Cybran as well, like I said, in the bright pink colour, working on his expansion over this way. So, quite a substantially sized map. It is a 20 by 20 kilometre map, so you while there is all that recam to go, you've got a bit of a distance to reach it. But reach it, you really, really want to, and you want to stop your opponent's getting as much of it as possible. You're never going to get one on the opposite side because, well, it's on the opposite side, but you must contest these side ones. You absolutely have to try and get as much of that as possible. Uh, towards the middle, the first person out is Yayu with his comm. He's going to look at grabbing this mass extractor and probably killing an engineer while he's at it. Let's have a look if we are going to experience any early air shenanigans. Well, not a single air factory has been built by team number one. There is an air factory on the way from Quisif, so there's at least some air showing up. Have a check down for team number two for any kind of air factories. And well, there is one here for Bricking, but it is currently producing engineers. Already upgrading a mass extractor to tier two. Because fuck it, why not? You got that much reclaim. And if you can afford it, why not? get it going but uh, so far the only actual air factory in the game belongs to team one this is all land so I'm having an absolute moment we have an air factory there for bricking and the opposite side an air factory here for Quisif and he is <coughs> excuse me wow that don't know where he is working on a scout and into you by the look of it okay 
just need to have myself a quick drink that toast will be done on wait. Pardon me, people. Bear with me while I just zoom out giving over. Right, apologies, and that was... Yep, that was something going down completely the wrong way, and just about to have myself a choke fest. Uh, over on the left hand side, we can see that the butt is, well, basically ignoring the flares. Command's going to take care of those quite easily, nice and happy, but on the other side, things could be a bit different for I'm Blind. He's moved all the way up here with his comm, and he's looking to grab some of that mass reclaim, so he's well in advance of any kind of support there. We have a gun upgrade going down for Yayu over this direction. We have a bunch of units from Slowbro in the area, and well, if you look at on blind, he's got basically no support. There's no units to help him out. He sent some over here to claim that little expansion slot, and looks like he just wants to get as much of this as, poss as possible. He's so walking around reclaiming, and uh, that might not be the best type of issues. Can see absolutely nothing. He's got a radar back here, but that's not showing any of the stuff that is right on his doorstep. Uh, can team to see him? Do they know he's there? Well, they know something's there. There is a radar sig signature, and they do have the radar. The gun upgrade is going down for Yayu. It is two thirds of the way done. Uh, coming up towards three quarters. It won't be too long, and I'm sure. As soon as he realizes there's a commander there, it's going to be a little bit of a, a little bit of an interesting little situation. We're going to keep an eye on that. Uh, blind has some units over on the right hand side, and but they're over here. And his commander's here any second now. This could be problematic for him. Just have a look left hand side. Just a quick check over here. We see Dick Butt is standing here. He's got his commander facing off against a bunch of units. Let's see Brotaku's coming over with his comm and Aurora's being pesky with their range but not much I can do. Duck buck noise fall on back but now this is blind. He's actually being could almost get cut off here. Uh, I haven't looked these units so rocking on around and along comes Yayu. Do they know that that's a commander? Yes well yes they do and do they know how much reinforcements there are? Well they don't and blind is well, I'd say he's blind, but he's not. He's got radar. He sees all of that, and he needs to think about walking away in a very, very fast rate. The problem is, this is a gun comm. This is Yayu coming in with units and gun comm. And these units here from Slowbro, they're actually cutting off the reinforcements that are trying to come to the commander's rescue. Blind has some problems. Quite a few problems, I'd say, actually. And, yeah, I don't think he's going to get out of this. Trying to run away, walking in a straight line, taking extra damage from all of the artifice, but it doesn't matter. He simply has no units, and that's going to be a free kill, basically, less than 8 minutes into the game on a 20 by 20 kilometer map. And that is, I'm blind, one of the higher rated players for team number 1, getting ejected nice and early. You know, I don't think he was kidding that much about his name. Very much blind, unfortunately, to what was happening around him, getting caught out there. Gun upgrade that was happening from Yayu, he just comes over and grabs, snags him there. And his reinforcements were getting cut off by Slowbro. He, so he was kind of two versus one. I feel like if Slowbro didn't have his units around, then blind would have been supported by his own units. But that was not to be. It was absolutely a two versus one there. He had no support from who should have been helping him there. I think it may have meant to be Mr. Von Steuben. He's his partner on there. He kind of moved to the left though. When I think perhaps it would have been the better idea to come over and assist a Slowbro. Get a uh, 2v2 over the side. Or perhaps, perhaps it was this guy, Brotaku, who was back here. Who's focusing on air instead of land. Maybe he was supposed to be supporting on. I'm not sure if there was a meta on this map or a decision. Uh, you can see on the opposite side for Team 2, we have had Ninja and Dickbart there. The two left-hand players have pushed up left. They have in front, Yayu's gone to the right, Slowbro's gone to the right, and even Ricking's gone far over to the right, so they don't have a dedicated air player of any kind, which is in contrast to Team Number 1, who 
Well, there's T3 on the way. And, well, he's got the eco for it. He's got the power. He's got the mass and everything. He should be absolutely fine for that run over the side. We can see there's T2PD up now for Mr. Fewer Earth. And he's having his comm drop back. Although, don't think he needs to worry too much because Dick Putt was trying to get an upgrade. Uh, he did get the gun upgrade in the end. He's very hurt though. So he can't re in reality use that com in combat. Or if you Earth has to slap down a few more TTPD. It's going to be an urge now. I hear fighting over on the right hand side. There we go. This is coming down from Burotaku. Sending in a few units. Just doing a wee bit of a... I guess just a wee bit of a nudge to see what is out there. But there's a response coming up from Yayu. They're moving into position to hold that line. Over on this side we can see another little fight brewing over here. This is between Burotaku and Bricking. And yeah, that's yeah, looking like it should be an interesting little wee scrimmage there because I think we're going to see well, those reinforcements coming. No, those are mostly engineers. Not much to slow these down. Could be something's coming over. I'm hearing a gun com, and this is not good. Von Steuben has been caught out. Almost. Almost caught out. Some units were coming out along with Dick Butt. And he took some damage to the comm, but size maybe he shouldn't loiter there. Well, see, it's a gun commander bearing down upon him as well as some units could potentially turn up. But that's not the case over on this side. We can see, well, this has been a huge push down from Rotaku. He's got a massive swarm of units and there's bugger all on the ground to stop them. They can stop here and wipe out this production area. They can move on down and kill off a bunch of the Seiko. If I was still running this and paying attention, I would be bringing them back to clean up all of this. You don't want to leave production behind you. I get maybe he's wanting to make a run at the main base, but just push it all on back. Although I haven't seen that as some T1 RC. They're going to have a go at everything here. Hopefully that all... No, it's not going to die, actually. There's not enough T1 ID on the passing to kill those off. They'll be heavily damaged, but they won't be dead. Just another couple of ID shells, and that would be one toasted T1 factory. Instead, he's going to carry on with the army. He's going to stop in a less than ideal position. And T2 coming off the rails from somewhere. All the way back here, there's an HQ4 bricking. And there's going to be a rocket bot, which is going to get caught nice and close. It does take out a Mantis every while it fires. But they're not terribly tough, and they'll be dying pretty quickly. Yeah, no, I would have finished off this. Anyway, here comes the cutoff from Yayu. So he needs some use down to help, even though there's extra units coming from Brotaku here to which gonna start working on Eco belonging to Slowbro. And they can actually kill off a bunch of stuff here quite unimpeded as this has all been chased right on down. I still think they could have got more done over here. Anyway, have a quick check on the other side of the map and back in the top corner, pretty much the other thing is happening. We have T2 on the ground for Ninja Samurai. And he's got, yep, yeah, that Ilsh was out the front killing off units. The units are pushing on up, and his commander is sneaked up behind, slapping out some T2PD here and there, just to just keep the uh, reinforcements a wee bit honest on that front. And this section is gone. There's a dick part removed from there, thanks to the T2PD belonging to fewer, fewer Earth. And Regen Aura on the way for Dickbart. He wants to turn into a gun com. And a why not? Right, T2 PD now going down for Yayu. He's got gun and T2 PD. That should be alright, but I don't think he's gonna be able to save that mess extractor. There we go. That is a dead thing, and these guys can now drop back out of range of this and keep themselves alive somewhat. Back in the top section. And yes indeed, yeah, this group is pushing, and there's nothing again, nothing on the ground to stop them. Got some T2 over here though, some Got a Rhino, got a stealth item, and this slot. Need to think about moving this way on an instep. Perhaps I need to try and protect these three mass extractors. But as it is, they're just also not passing, letting them through. Commander should be okay down here. He's got himself a T2 PD, a T1. Well, maybe he could do a bit more actually if he's planning to buy by set, but maybe not. It's just thrown down a Gunter. Get a T2 ID up, which would be kind of irritating with the distance it has, and that is T3 air. I see a scout. Yep, indeedy. Rotaku has T3 air, whilst over on the other side of the map, there isn't even T2. The only air factory for team number two is this one, and it's T1. And the a strap bomber could get a lot done if it's managed correctly. Alright, this direction the push is coming on through, but it has been intercepted now. Those three mass extractors are dead. 
But as a T1PD here helping out, there's some T2 units on the ground that Ushu is not going to be too much longer for this world at this rate. Getting chased by Mantis and yeah, we're going to run into this very shortly and that's going to be the end of them. Okay. Alright, I'm hearing bombers. There we go, T1 bombers down the bottom right corner that's coming out from bricking. They want to try and stop this push from happening, which has been reasonably effective. And now here we go, this is Yayu, he's doing a wee bit of a turn, he's got a few T2PD up and an army up behind him. So this kind of thing is, you sort of pick and, you sort of choose. So you have yourself a few units, yes, but you don't want to overload on units and, and two, you sort of pick one or the other. You don't generally pick both. Um, while you're turtling, you sure have a handful of tier 1 units, but that's probably enough to help repel an attack. But you don't want to keep building, you want to stop with that, and you want to work on your eco. Which it looks like is what's happening, we have a bunch of T2 factories here, and they are ready to spit out Ojibas. That's not a bad shout. Okay, who is doing air? Or team number 2 is the question, because I'll be less than surprised after that. Yep, there we go. That's a strat coming out from Brotaku, and that's exactly the situation. Get that out. And let's just have a look at all this exposed eco. You've got t a couple of T2 mass extractors here. You've got T2 power. You're trying to get T3 land off that. Got more T2 mass extractors. That strat bomber could get a lot, a lot of work done. And where is it going to start? Well, apparently it's going to start by heading over this way. I think that's a wrong idea. Oh, poor eco. We should just... Nope, it is dropping this bomb, but it's going to get nothing done. It's a shield in the way. And, yeah, down into the yellow from that pass. Enough flak there that makes it think, yeah, maybe not. Go here. My word, a bomb right there? That would be great. And kill off two mass extractors for the price of one. Here comes the bomb, and nope. Just going for the anti-air? Question mark? There's a few engineers, sure, but that seems like a wasted opportunity. Could have killed off both those mass extractors. Anyway, it is now doing the work it has been built for which is to destroy eco your opponents have no t3 air that's exactly what you do and what is it going for now um seems to have skipped to these and is dropping a bomb on the shielded location so decision making with that bomber has not been the greatest as of yet nine kills yes but nothing doing as far as anything else goes could maybe take out a commander there if it was paying attention but anyway here comes a, another run what's it going for this direction looks like oh if it pops that does not though kills t2 t2 mix and t2 power which slowbro was standing right beside more bombs going on out here we go this is better starting to pick off the t2 mixes destroy as much eco as possible is exactly what you want to do got some more here and oh wow we've been looking at that dick part taken out by the gunship so a couple of broadswords also out from brotaku and they have actually taken out dick but in the mid he has commander caught out with no air support and that is just brutalization t3 air is just capitalizing upon the lack of opposition from team number two sorry for missing that kill there but that definitely was broadswords killing a commander that is just unfortunate and the strap bomber finally gets taken down by a couple of lightning tanks quickly run off the production line from ninja because well he's got no t3 so he had to do something in this direction the broadswords are falling back though they run into a whole horde of flak popped out from yayu and there was some belated t3 i saw that or at least another flak sitting there but that does not last long in the face of broadswords so t3 air was used reasonably effectively it's a bunch of dead mass extractors and the power around the place and of course the broadswords that came out they did finish off poor old Dickbart. no air to speak of and he was taken out of the game just like that good times all right let's have a quick comparison of everything else though and left hand side we now have sniper bots and this is a ninja being annoying sniper bots trying to get the work done and they will because he's just the single shield over here and without some kind of marker of telling the T3 to RD to actually shoot at them, they're going to be able to just sit there and get shot after shot after shot after shot, and nothing's going to slow them down. Of course, they can always drop back to the shields if they want. Over on the right-hand side, big battle going on here. This is a firing line belonging to Ricking, and it is, well, 
getting hammered from Waltzers over here. They're starting to pick off his mini some units just to help out. And a big swarm coming from Rotaku. Lots of T1, yes, but they are getting the job done. And it's now Brooking who's falling back in the face of all of this. But he has some support over here. There's a bunch of units from Yayu. And a few from Slowbro. They could actually swing back down this way and help plug this gap before this army starts running through here, killing off Eco, killing off Bill Power. Checking back in the top left, and there we go, Sniper Bots, it is job done. T2RD still trying to be T2RD on the wrong item. If they plinked off these things first, it would have been fine. But unfortunately, that is not the case. Any kind of scouting going on? No. He had no idea that Sniper Bots were plinking him down, but it does now. And that is going to be problematic there. Okay, this push has stopped. Yes, indeed, so Brotaku has... Nope, he's carried on again. Looks like he was settling into a formation, but instead he has grabbed those units and is going to carry on the run. And that's pretty much exactly what he needs to do. Far more units here than I take down. Put your T2 in the mix as well, so just straight on through this time. And just walk on down and kill what you can. Although there's a bunch of rocket boss down here. They're going to do some damage if they get in range. Sitting here is not the greatest move. They are stuck in range of these units, which are catching up. Really want to get down here and kill off the production. No, quick check back up in this direction, and well, the sniper bots have died thanks to a broadsword bot. Now there's mobile T3R doing the thing, and they are going to pretty much have this wrecked in a matter of moments. T2 power here is going to go pop. I thought it would go pop. Of course, just mobile T3R does less damage than the uh, static T2s, but the static T2 is going to die as well thanks to the uh, sniper bot. And there we go. Nothing much left to that literally four position. On the right hand side, and how's that jaunt going? Well, it's going pretty well, kind of jaunty. And these things are moving through. There is Bricking with his commander there, but he's got T2, he's got stealth. And of course, he'd have overcharge as well. He's got the unit supporting him, so he'll be absolutely fine. This slot, if they caught the commander alone, it would be a threat. But uh, they've got a lot to work through to try and get there first, and they probably won't. Okay, this is probably going to be where they will run into a brick wall in the fall of all these forces. Got the point defense rocking up as well. They won't get too much further. Okay, kill that mass extractor would be fun because that is quite a lot of upgrades on it. But the units ain't been micro, they're just being sent in to do what they can as they can. And they are pretty much done for at this stage. Radio. Let's just have a switch back up this direction. And what have we got? We got an Elshi push up this way. There is some T2 PD, there's some T1 PD going up. And T1 PD behind you as well as some sniper bots there from Stroibin. And those are going to be handy at tickling a bit of extra damage out. I'm hearing another strat somewhere. There it is. Coming on down there. Another strat bomb coming through from... They not have T3 yet. yet. Do, uh, no, no, no. There's T3. It looks like it's just a reason though. There's no T3 power to go with it. So Bricking is getting into the T3 air game, but nothing much doing at this stage. And Strat Bomber is... Oh, well, it's got five kills, so it looks like I think I knocked off that little section there. But Broad... No, Stingers. I thought they were Broad Swords, but they're just Stingers. They could actually come over here and cause some havoc. Although now we have a single ASF off the production line for Brooking. And the Strat Bomber goes for the T3 Mass Extractor. That's never going to work. And there's a couple of Sams in the base belonging to Ninja. So Strat Bomber gets less done over this direction and here we go mobile t 3 and a sniper bot they're doing as they do trying to plink things off range still got the snipers here from von Steuben Goodell but nothing doing there and this position is also going to be wrecked out a few t1 factories but mostly it's going to be the power that's going to be a loss and of course the mass extractor these have been very annoying alrighty just have a quick check on the wrist map. What do we have? We have T2 on the ground. That must be T3 somewhere because those are in. No, it's T3 power on the commander. He's built that. And that's a nuke. So Qusuf is going for a nuke launcher. He's starting the build already. There's still just T2 units coming on out and T2 air. He's looking at upgrading his mixes, but he's going for the nuke. In front of him, we have T3 land available for Mr. Fewer Earth, but not much doing with that. We have T3 available for Von Steuben as well. We saw the Sniper Boss before, and plenty of T3 air grid going up over here for Brotaku. As well as in this direction, he's got land, although it looks like it's just T1 land spam at this stage. 
there is a T3 HQ here though, some loyalists popping out could also start pumping out those bricks. A tech launcher. Well, why not? Killing Eco at long range. And that would actually be kind of useful. There's not much in the way of tech missile defense. And all of these are under threat from that launcher. We're just going to check the range on that thing. And yeah, that's pretty good. So you're going to kill one, two, three, four, five. At least five mass extractors are going to be killed. You don't want to go over there. But Ninja has finished off in a experimental. There we go. And that is a chicken. A Thosa. And it's ready to go for a walk. And what do they have to counter that? Well, the answer is basically not much. Well, they have got a bunch of units around. The majority of them are T2 and T1. Like this band here is pretty much that which gets murdered by the chicken. Got a bunch of harbingers up behind it to support. Do have a few sniper bots here that could do some damage. And particularly they could do some damage to this siege tank. You have a look at that one volley from these guys and it's just about dead. One more volley, we'll see it go. There we go, it has gone now, and yep, so they're actually pretty handy for damage at range. A whole lot of those will ruin your day. Up on the top left hand side, this is a push coming in from Qusuf, and there's, I was going to say, there wasn't much on the ground, but there are some siege tanks. Not much point defense, there's just the one, but the siege tanks should be under shield, should be more than enough for this bunch of rhinos. We throw some extra damage from the lightning tanks from a sniper bot over there, and this position should be safe. Looks like they're trying to get the shields down because, I mean, that's the first thing you want to do. If you can get rid of the shields, it will allow for run-ups later on. But are they even going to do it? No, they're pulling away. And I think pulling away is a bad idea because they're already broken, basically. I'm not going to escape the siege tanks and I hear the chicken. There we go. Chicken has run a foul of this band of units pushing on through and push on through they will. They're just going to ignore the chicken trying to get as much damage done as possible. But that's not going to work very well for them because the chicken's going to turn around and chase and of course the chicken does have arms that can point in different directions as well as reinforcements coming over from Yayu and that is going to be the end of these units over here as well already how's that nuke going well the nuke is almost built and the big question is has team 2 noticed it and the answer is yes but they're going to see that completion, and if they've seen it and scouted it, they haven't marked it. I didn't see it mentioned in the chat. They haven't marked it. And have they? Have they built any defense against it is the next big question. All right, got an upgrade going on there for Slowbro. We have... So he's not thinking about it. We have... Yayu standing around all nice and still. He's got T3. He's got a few engineers, but they're quite static. Uh, over this side, we can see no power going up for Ninja. Monkey going up for Brooking. Nope, I don't think they have any clue that there's a completed nuke launcher sitting there. Oh, it's never going to load if you do that. Sorry, I have to check. No. If you build a nuke launcher, or if you build a... Uh, nuke defense you need to not be stalling mass for it to load so with Crucif stalling mass right there that is not going to load it's going to be going at absolute snail crawling speed pixel by pixel really really slow but I do wonder if there is a bit of a panic about the chicken which is running right into where Mon Steuben is having said that that's a lot of point defense and the harbingers are turning up that chicken's going to Start shedding health like there's no tomorrow. Broadswords rocking overhead as well. Yeah, right, okay. Everyone sure is gonna live it, and that is one very dead, very quick chicken. Very quickly dead chicken. He tries to turn to walk away, but no dice. Killed a lot of the point defense, but my word. That died very quickly once the harbingers and the broadswords turned up. Job done for that guy. We do have a supporting army pushing up behind it though. There's a lot of units here belonging to Yayu, including T3, a few siege tanks in there. We've got some lightning tanks up behind as well. So if those broad swords come back, or even if some stress come over, try to do damage to this army, they're going to run afoul of these lightning tanks and cause some issues. Yeah, broad swords need to keep away from that. But this army can basically bypass all of this. They can just go straight on up and there's not much there to stop them. Not much there at all, and it's going to have to be Von Steuben who moves in with his army to try and encourage him to move in the other direction. 
blow them down. He has a handful of harbingers. It's a single point to be step there. He's got a little sniper bot trying to do a sting on that front. There we go. Stingers are overhead, but the lightning tank's going to see to them quite handily. They won't last too long. Wings. There we go. And this flak is just everything on the ground reduced to murder. The air that comes in. An arcing. Is that attack missiles? Yep, indeed. There they go. And it's going to be the units from behind that Von Strowman is going to have to try and use to deal with us. He's got a bunch of TT over here under shields as well. You're going to want to bring that over. And Bricking has finished off his monkey by the look of it. That is an alert and I'm certain, I'm sure, I'm certain he was a monkey that he has built. This army has now overrun this position. And thankfully though, the T3 HQ is all the way at the back here for Von Strowman. So he'll be able to keep building T3 units but he does not have a lot on the way of Eco. All these T2 on the ground, they're going to turn those lightning tanks into scrap. Harbinger is going to do the same to the siege tank, maybe. Yes, indeed. Siege tank goes on down, and these harbingers have been a distraction. They have caused these units to be called back, which is good. They need them to fall back to try and sort things out. All right. Are you still stalling on mass? Yes, you are. It doesn't matter how much build power you put on this kind of thing, if you're stalling mass, it's not going to happen. Right, quick check, and still no tag on the nuke. So, any defences going up? Oh, here's one here, it has been absolutely rushed up by Ninja, and we'll see he's not stalling on... Oh, he's got plenty of mass, actually, he's got buttloads of mass. You can see that is loading up nice and fast, it's definitely going to be completed before that nuke launcher is ready. And what kind of range do we have on that? Well, it protects himself, protects his expansion, and protects the main base-ish of Yayu. Although Yayu now has his own nuke defense, his low ding. You could nuke there and kill it off, though. Do we have anything going on down here? Nope. Well, I think we're going to be relying on this one here from Yayu for some defense. What's the range on that? Yeah. That helps cover all of that. The front section, though. Nothing doing, no shields, no nothing. And what's that? Oh, it's attack missile. That launcher all the way back here. Yes, indeed, there it is. It's got some five kills, so it has knocked off a bunch of the mixes around here. As expected, it was used to do on that over this direction. And the siege tanks are running afoul of a T1 swarm. They're pushing themselves quite well, though. It is T1, and they are a bunch of siege tanks. Of course, there's some T3 mobile R2 dropping their shells on whatever they feel like. Could even be friendly spot. So that'll be clean up operation there for these siege tanks. Right, how far away is that from being built? It is ages. It's not even halfway loaded, maybe about 40%. And if we have a switch on down here. Yep, at this rate, I believe this SMD is going to overtake it. And then it's a question of, where are you going to nuke, bro? Won't be able to nuke over here because of the SMD belonging to Ninja. Won't be able to nuke here because of the SMD belonging to Yayu, which covers these two bases as well. Okay, we just saw a couple of experimental notifications, and Fatboy is done for Brotaku. He's setting up another one. And Monkey is done for Kusuf. So Kusuf can now actually focus on this here. And if he keeps that kind of build focus, the nuke may very well be finished loading. It was like just over half done, and this is under. Is Yayu stalling mass? Yes, he is, and he is stalling hard. That is not going to be loading at all. That nuke could be used here and here, and there's going to be nothing to stop it because that will not get loaded in time at this rate. There's definitely all hands on nuke for Qusif. As long as he doesn't launch it in range of this loaded SMD over this direction, he will be absolutely fine. But that is a T3 artillery. So Ninja's just basically stopped building units, he's throwing all his eco into that T3RD and it is just about up. And that's going to be a problem they will have to try and deal with. Over this side, the Fatboy, well it's almost there, but it is shield stalling. Rotaku's having problems with power? Not at the moment. Should be okay. Right, got a few Ravagers here, they're sending those long range shells down trying to take down the shield one but guess and once that goes the point defenses will have a bad time over this direction we can see there's a few sniper bots lining up as well as some teeth mobile t3rd 
the uh, nice long range, nice firepower, but what they cannot stand against is that kind of thing. If that bad boy opens his fire up on this army over here, it's going to have a bad, bad time. But on the flip side, if this army can rush that fat boy, it is going to have a bad time of its own. Needs to think about turning away before those siege tanks get in range. But attack finishes. Yes, there is a second fat boy. And it is good. Right, how far away is that nuke? Well, that's not very far away at all. That's a donut being started by von Steuben. Let's check that SMD. Well, it's getting close to being loaded as well. But is it going to actually happen? Not stalling on mass quite as much anymore. But we'll load up slowly. And Kyosef says, I don't know what he says, but I think the gist of it is strategic launch detected. Nuke it. Use it. Use it before the SMD's loaded. Gamble. Take a gamble. Make. Just see if it works. He's not. He's not just yet. Alright, here we go. Monkey is pushing out in front of the fat boy. This is a decent idea. Have the monkey up front. It can do some extra damage to any close range things. The fat boy can lob its long range artillery at anything it feels like. It gets a bit closer. Monkey's going to take a bunch of damage if it keeps walking though. There are siege tanks in this mix. Plenty of sniper bots but the siege tanks are going to be the main threat. They are very tanky. They can ride to kill. The units are popping up behind. Monkey's fine. Sniper bots are not. And there's the nuke. Right question is where has it been pinged for? And that should get through. I think they have edged. Yes, they have. They've edged Ninja. It's going to land right in the middle of these two guys. And the question is, what's it going to kill? If it lands here, it could kill this SMD. It might miss a whole bunch of things, but the nuke is coming. The experimentals are coming, the monkey is having a ground up time, there's a counter monkey coming up there and the fat boy is just knocking off your nest, monkey needs to think about falling back to it. Here we go, nuke is a land and who's going to get caught in it? What's going to get caught in it? Well, a lot got caught in that. Some damage on Slowbro over here, he got stunned from the edge of it. The SMD is down for Yayu but critically this one here survives and it can work its way to getting loaded and provide some extra defense. Monkey is dead in this direction and that was actually the monkey from Team 2. So this monkey survived. I'm going to attribute that to the extra assistance from the fat boy. Rain of those shells down upon the opponents but this monkey is going to be very dead very shortly. There's T3 RD hitting it. 3000 health and it is, might actually get out of there. Look at that. It's managed to get away from the front line and survive or on your mind stress. Yeah, it's dead. <laughs> I thought it was about to get away, but no. Monkey dies. Stress did the job. Some ACFs turn up from Brotaku, and those stress picked a secondary target because they were probably not going to survive, which they did not. Might as well kill something else along the way. And chicken. Did they know there's a chicken? The answer is yes. And that fat boy should be running. That fat boy is running. That chicken is going to be chasing it down. See how that goes on that front. But a low push around the right hand side, even while all that has been happening. Rotaku has sent a swarm of loyalists around the bottom. And well, they're in position to do some extra damage there. They've killed off all the eco along the way. That's dead, that's dead. And now they can maybe not stand still waiting to die. There we go. There's the push command. I'm going to run into a big swarm of T1, which is just going to melt in the face of these guys. There we go, just look at them. Pretty much collapse like a wave as a loyalist run on through. And they can keep running through to look at doing some damage over here. Bricking needs to be worried about that actually. If they picked up his comm, they could kill him. Like no buts and maybes, if these things rushed over here, there is enough of them to kill Bricking before he can finish him off, I would think is most likely. Some T2P up here from Slowbro trying to be helpful, but this is a threat. Although strap bombers over here, that might be the saving grace. Okay. Have they found the commander? Yes and no, they just moved on in. What are they going to focus on? Anything? No, they're just sort of like moving in, trying to kill it as much as possible. Few ones here have been stopped to move in, kill off the power, kill off the everything. Got strap bombers over here, and these guys looks like they are just looking to destroy as much of the base as possible. Which they aren't doing a bad job of. Gonna kill a support commander here. 
These guys are moving away for some unknown reason. Looks like they've changed their mind about the target. Maybe they're moving up this way. Maybe they're looking to take out the SMD, which is going to be loaded any second now. That makes that nuke launcher a wee bit redundant. There we go. One dead support commander. One not dead support commander. Oh, I could have finished that guy off. 1200 health. That feels like a missed opportunity there. Didn't quite finish him off. And it's going to keep that echo alive. I think maybe they should have stayed and just murdered out that base. Because they've moved up this way and pretty much just died from sitting still. They caught up one mass extractor, but there's a break. There's point fence. And that is a dead unit. And here we go. In compliment to the T3 Arty, there's an arse washer. And let's just see what that T3 Arty's been doing well. It's been doing great things over here. Another nuke is out. Questions where is that going to be sent? And the loss has been put to use right away. Murders a whole swarm of harbingers. 17 harbies from that drop alone. That stops that army dead in its tracks. Incredibly useful. This nuke is not going to land, I don't think. It's, yeah, it's been sent over this direction. There's definitely a loaded SMD there. Not going to get anything done. We should see that nuke get shot down any second now once it reaches in range. There's the shot. And the nuke is defended against. But that T3 RD continues to rain its shells down upon the base of von Steuben. And yeah, he's running out of shields. Any moment now, things are going to go from bad to worse. Pigeon here has taken a hit. It is very, very damaged. And down to just a T2 shield here protecting everything. Trying to pop up a T3 shield, Jin. Maybe wants to think about stopping that. I think that's where his... Yep, he really should. Stop building that. Just to try and get the shield generators completed because his shields are down. And the next one that lands could land on that T3 P gen right there. And it would be game over. Oh, that clicked on just in time. Very, very lucky. Left hand side, what have we got going on? Well, there's a roaming T2 army from Quisif, but not much else on the ground from him. He is building another T3 P gen, trying to get us some power. Commander is way out in the open. T3 upgrade on the way there for Von Stormer's commander. We'll try and get that T3 power up and just clipping the edges of the coverage there. And actually if a shell landed in here, never mind. Shell landed on the donut. The donut is taken down and hey look, there's your mass. You could like, oh that must have been so close to being done. Look at the amount of mass on that wreck. That had to be virtually done. Virtually done, if not actually done, by the time those shells landed. And you want to reclaim that wreck before the shells drop and remove it from existence. But, ooh, that was close. It was very close. It almost killed that. I hear the Awasa. Where is it? I don't see it. No, it dropped his bomb somewhere. There it is. Being defensive duty, not actually attacking anything. Drops a bomb and kills one thing. Congratulations. You have one kill to where the other one go? He had one that had a whole bunch of kills. I'm guessing it got shot down somewhere. Completely missed the Awasa getting shot down. How about that? That's a bit of a bad me, but now this one is wanting destruction on the front lines and is a massive air swarm to actually keep it going. It looks like at some point Rotaku has had to suicide his air in to kill the other Awasa because I don't see it lying around. I don't see the wreck, but there we go. Finally, the T3RD has made its way through. Oh no. That's just awful. That is a big glut out of one Stroyman's base. The shields do pop back on, but the old is still doing its thing. Just being a bit careful there. doesn't want to over-engage. I think it feels like if he flies it towards the enemy's base, it's just going to get picked off by Sam's, but there's only a handful of of ASFs belonging to Brotaku is going to take them a while to take the Awasa down and with the surrounding air support it's not going to be a thing not looking good for team one left hand side and there's just everything everywhere T1 RTs rolling out from all over the place there's a big line of factories been set up here One, two, five, six, six factories and they're just spitting out those really annoying zooies and off they go to do their thing do we have the T3 band there and hello was that the other? No, that's another Awasa. What? Is he just pumping out Awasas for no good reason? Well, not, not no good reason. He's definitely pumped them out. He's got two in the air at the moment. That other one definitely died, but now there's two Awasas around. Now, those are going to be very, 
<laughs> upon Straven, he says what a few of you lot have probably figured out. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we are fucked. Yeah, well, you've got two Awasas doing your thing. You've got your base is screwed by T3RD. These guys are now looking to finish off a nuke launch there. There's the nuke is down for Kusuf as well. That is a T3RD reposition to focus on his base. He's hammered. The Awas is hammered. The air grid is about to go up in a complete and utter amount of fireworks. Kaboom! Brotaku was right under that bomb. And his base is just decimated from that. Yusuf throws out the control K. He's like, yep, no, nah, that is game. And that very much is game from these guys. It's only going to be one person left shortly. It's going to be Newer Earth. And the question is, where's this comp? Well, he's right there. So you get the impression that it won't be there for long. Got T3 ID hopping on down. Got a pair of wasps overhead. And you're going to have some stress coming in as well, I think. I think I saw some stress somewhere. Nope. No strats. But uh, no, I would say this game has been carried by Ninja. Fields down. More Awasa bombs. Lots of damage. 2000 health. Okay, what's going to hit him first? It's going to be the T3 ID or is it going to be the Awasa? I think it's going to be the Awasa. Flat. 